Hi, welcome back to our main homestead. Today I'm going to show you how to grow your own animal food in the form of fodder. There are several reasons to grow your own animal food. Uh, here on our homestead, one of our main goals is to be as self-sufficient as possible, so that's our main reason. Um, you're also going to cut cost. Um, it's way cheaper to grow your own food than it is to go buy feed from the feed store or wherever you buy it from. But probably the most important reason is the health benefits. There's way more nutritional value in sprouted grains than there are in feeding whole grains. So once you go through the sprouting process and create the fodder for your animals, you're actually feeding them a much healthier alternative. I'm not talking about planting fields of barley, oats, wheat, corn, whatever, harvesting them, processing them, and getting them ready to feed animals. It's way more simple than that, way more cost effective, and a lot less labor intensive. Growing your own fodder is extremely easy. The first step is to figure out how much fodder do you need to grow. Um, you may want to start small and just grow a couple of test batches to get used to the process and get a feel for what works best for you. We are sprouting barley solely. You can sprout oats, wheat, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, barley is by far the easiest to sprout um, in our experience and what everyone else has told us. So at the end of the video, I will give you some guidelines. We grow for sheep and chickens, so I'll give you some guidelines as to how much they will need to eat. And then that can help you kind of base what you need to grow on that. So the first step is to measure out your fodder. I take a 16 ounce plastic cup and fill it up twice. So 32 ounces of barley seed, and I soak that in water. So you'll see me pour it in a bucket, cover it with water, and then I add a cap and a half full of bleach. And that helps to prevent any mold from growing because it's obviously going to stay wet. You're watering it regularly and it's going to hold on to the moisture. So the barley has been soaking for 24 hours overnight in these two buckets and so it's time to drain it off and then we're going to put it into the trays that it's going to go in and stay in until it's time to feed it in about a week or so. So you don't have to worry about getting all the water out. Uh, it's going into perforated trays that are going to drain anyway. You're going to be watering it two to three times a day. So there also may be some trash like stems and some other seeds. A lot of times you'll find corn kernels in here. Just put it all in your trays. Don't worry about trying to sort any of that out. It's, um, it'll all do perfectly fine. There are a lot of options for trays. You definitely want something that's perforated. I don't know if you can see this, but this just has slits in it. These trays, I use these because I already had them all. I bought a pallet of this type stuff at an Amish auction for five dollars so um, why not put it to use I've got plenty of it um, I use this more as a support so it just gives a little more structure these trays are are a little bit flimsy you know what garden trays are like so they can um, they can kind of give on you and once the barley goes in here and sprouts this tray typically I get eight to nine pounds is what it weighs once the barley has sprouted so it's uh, pretty heavy for these plastic trays all you want to do is spread this as evenly as possible. So So here I have the two trays set up um, kind of over the top of our tub. This is the only heated space we have is our 400 square foot cabin. 
Um, so hopefully that'll be remedied before next winter. But for now, um, these things need to stay at least 60 degrees and it's get, still getting down below freezing every night here. So it's almost the end of day three. I've been watering it two to three times a day since I put it in the trays and it's starting to really take off now. Day one, you see much of nothing. Day two, you'll start to see some small kind of white spots on the end of the seeds where it's starting to sprout. And then in the last 24 hours, it's really taken off. The seeds have been in the trays for four days now. You can see how the growth is starting to even out after I rotated them 180 degrees yesterday. The left side, which was on the top before, is starting to fill in and catch up with the uh, upper side. They may need to be rotated again before we're done, but we'll play that by a year, maybe not. They're on this angle so that technically you could just pour water at the top of the tray and let it filter down to the bottom and drain out on the lower end. I like to kind of spread it around a little bit. It really doesn't take that much more effort and kind of gives you a better, I think a little more even growth possibly. Day five, you can see it's evened out. Uh, the growth is pretty even all across the uh, trays and it's uh, really starting to take off. So um, we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. It's been a little over six days. The red trays are really filling out. Um, you can see the root mat um, very thick and obviously this is very strong. So now it's been a little over seven days and it's still growing strong. Um, Listen to that. So the barley's been in the trays for eight days now. Um, it's definitely ready to feed. There's no hard and fast rule that says you have to feed at eight days. Um, some people go nine, probably could have fed it yesterday on day seven. Um, that might work better if you're on a rotation. I only grew two trays just for this uh, situation. But um, our long-term plan is to grow this regularly. So we would start, figure out the number of trays that we need and then start that many trays every day and, you know, go seven, eight days, whatever it turns out to be. That way you've got a full supply of food ready to feed every day. Once you get seven or eight days in, into the process. So for today, I'm not going to try to feed an exact amount, but... There are guidelines as to how much uh, to fodder to feed per day for each species that would you would feed fodder to. I'll give you the numbers I have for sheep and chickens, but I'm going to cut a, just a section of this off, feed it to the chickens, feed the rest to the sheep, and then I'll give you those numbers. So you can see how easy it is to grow fodder as a main source of feed. For our chickens, we feed fodder, we crush eggshells up and feed them back to them for calcium source and they get grit from the ground. As far as sheep, fodder can replace all of the grain that you feed. They still need a mineral supplement and then they're gonna need a source of roughage, which in our case would be hay. So figuring how much you need to grow. For sheep and chickens, the recommendation is to feed two to three percent of their body weight a day. We usually feed twice a day, so that would be divided, of course. Um, if we say our sheep weigh 120 to 150 pounds, I would always err on the high side. And all of these are just kind of a starting point as well. So as you start growing your fodder and feeding, you want to watch what their body condition looks like, what their body 
actually looks like and um, are they gaining weight, losing weight, all those things play a factor in how much you would feed. But as a starting point, two to three percent of their body weight, so at 150 pounds, that would be four and a half pounds. A tray weighs about eight to nine pounds, so you would say roughly a half tray would be a good place to start. So we have six sheep um, that we're feeding uh, grain to at this point, so that would mean three trays would feed the sheep, and then two to three percent of the body weight for the chickens. Our chickens weigh roughly eight pounds, I would say, so that's a 32nd of a tray. I mean, almost nothing. So you could just kind of portion out a part of a tray for the chickens and then adjust as necessary. If you needed to add another full tray as you go because of any adjustments that need to be made, that would be extremely easy to do. Saw how I had it set up on an incline. So what you would do is set the top tray at this angle and then set the next tray below it at this angle and you would have rows of trays. So you may have six trays across um, or three trays across, whatever works for you, but have the top row at this angle, the next row at this angle, the next row at this angle, next row at this angle, how many ever down you go. And then when you water at the top of this uh, tray, it's going to flow down, drip down into this tray and flow down and soak all that. So you're watering once from the top and then you're done. You don't have to try to water all each individual tray. You're just watering that first layer and the water filters down. Hope that helps you guys save a little money, have healthier animals, and become more self-sufficient. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and follow along for the rest of our videos on our main homestead. Mm -hmm.